Everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101. This is just an update video. This might not be pertinent to everyone. If you've already watched these videos on these other channels, no need to go any further. But if not, uh, a few people have asked me, you know, when are we going to see the rest of the gauntlet videos for the Jesmic JX2? Uh, they've been happening. So they, uh, the second stop was William Myers' channel, Manus Outdoors. The second stop was Larry Roberts. And the third stop was Mike Travis's channel, uh, Blue Mountain Bushcraft and Outdoors. Right now it's on its way to Justin Wolf for the Greer Wolf channel. And by the time Justin's done with it, we will have done just about everything you can do with that knife. But I, what I did was I went through all three videos that have happened so far and basically just cut some clips out of it, pasted it together, give you guys an overall impression of what these guys are doing with the Jesmic and what their thought process is as they test it out. But if you want to see the entire videos, the, the links are in the description box below so you can go watch the entire test. And while you're there, make sure you sub all those guys too. They are part of the Gauntlet Review Circle and they all come on Prepare My 101 from time to time. So that's all I got for right now. Let's go into the video and see how the Jesmic is doing. And don't laugh, it's the Jesmic. I'm not changing the name. You gotta pay tribute to, anyway, let's check out the video. It is Chris's knife from LT Wright Handcraft Knives. The JX2, the Jesmic, which I, I really can't say with a straight face. But <laughs> you see, the uh, most outstanding feature of this knife is obviously that big belly that's on there right, right now. And I'm interested in seeing what that is gonna do for some of the techniques that I'm gonna use this for. We're gonna find out. Uh, Overall, I say the knife profile is pretty impressive to me. It's a four and a half inch blade and a five inch handle. Obviously full tang. Got a heck of a 90 degree spine on it and it's a pretty, not too aggressive jimping on it. Scanty ground, almost to a mirror polish. Absolutely razor sharp. The Scanty, uh, Scanty is one of my favorite grinds. This handle, amazing guys. This is a great handle. Perfect. You're, this is an amazing handle. There's, a, there's nothing more to say. This fits great. One of the most impressive handles I've ever held. I almost even like it more than the GNS, which is also made by uh, LT as well. This is a great handle. One of the best I've ever held. This almost beats it, guys. This is really comfortable. Awesome. So let's get this uh, on some wood, see what it does. When I first start out, I like to make really big, thick curls because that's what's going to fuel my fire. Hmm. It's doing a good job so far. I find that if I come in here and just hold that edge, it wraps the, the ridge that I previously did and just does a beautiful job at feathering. Now, of course, everyone's going to say, oh, Chris is your best friend and you're on Prepared Mind 101 all the time. Look, guys, Chris is my best friend, but with my ethics, I mean, I'll, be, I'll just be honest with you. He has another knife that he hates that I hate. I absolutely will not touch the knife. Wow. This I'm liking so far. <laughs> Pretty nice. Oh, and like I said, I'm practically making a broom here, man. much fun isn't it yeah it is really nice brother speed it up here pretty nice man that's amazing cool also get kind of a batoning demo as well same foot here yeah that drop point in there I don't know if any there was any other way to design that to where it would come out straight, but that might eh, no, it really doesn't hinder the baton too much. So 
slicing obviously is really good i mean that's what the main feature or design of a knife like that would be would be slicing but let's try to plane with it decent size little stick here Oh yeah, that's beautiful. It really hogs into that wood once you get into that belly. See, when I'm feather sticking, I'm down here. When I'm carving, I'm up here into this belly. So, I mean, you got options when you're using this knife. That's good. Quick. <laughs> yeah, that was real quick. It popped it right out. And that's because that aggressive, the aggressive grind of the scanty grind and that big belly just dug under and popped that notch right out. Start a bow drill hole. A divot for a bow drill. That's part of why I wanted that point to be center line to be more useful. You know, obviously a blade like this is really going to lend itself to skinning and, and butchering. And I think when this actually comes out to production, I'm going to get one. And I'm going to have it for me when I'm hunting, you know, deer hunting and things like that. I want to see how it processes animals out. That's the one test that we're going to be lacking today, unfortunately. Hi, welcome back to Blue Mountain Bushcraft and Outdoors. Today we're going to do a gauntlet review in Texas. Stay tuned. So I'm down in South Central Texas on the Martindale Ranch, a few hours outside of San Antonio. Uh, I'm here for the week to do some bow hunting for wild pigs and turkeys. It just so happened this trip also coincided with a gauntlet review from Prepared Mind 101. They were able to get me the LT Wright Jessmuck, <laughs> as it's been nicknamed. Hopefully they come up with a, uh, a better official name than that, but so far that's what it's being called. And it's kind of funny and I've gotten used to it, so it's not so bad. You can see reviews of this on Larry Roberts' channel, as well as the Mantis Outdoors channel, William Myers. They've both put this thing through its paces, doing all sorts of bushcraft skills, woodworking, fire making, carving, all that stuff. So I didn't see really any reason to duplicate what they've already done. Since I was coming down here to hunt pigs, it was my intention to bring this, use this as my only knife, and see how it does processing game. But this kind of twist in wood puts a lot of stress in a blade. Quite frankly, I was a little concerned that it might deflect the blade, but it didn't. It's perfectly straight. One eighth inch, super tough. Now it's time to get to work. I'm gonna hang this bugger up, clean her out, and see how she does processing game. Stand by. Mm -hmm. 
is a wood processing tool. Like I said earlier, this is pretty much on par with my Skookum Bush tool, which if any of you are familiar with that knife, it is, at least in my opinion, probably one of the ultimate bush crafting knives that are out there. This thing will hold its own against that and that's, at least for me, that's saying a lot. This continuous curved edge, the excellent heat treat, good edge geometry, um, it all combines to make this, I guess you would say, greater than the sum of its parts. It looks funny guys. <laughs> of that there is no doubt. It is a strange looking blade. But my god does it work. On wood it is fantastic. So while Chris may have primarily thought of this as a woodworking tool, this has a lot of design elements which lend itself to game processing. And you know that's where this review came in. That's a pretty thick handle. There's a lot of meat to it which is great when you're holding on to it. But if you're up here, I think for an extended period of time it could be a little cumbersome. Just a little. Not much. It just makes it very easy to control. You know exactly where that tip is at all times. Um, and when you're working inside a game that's fairly important. I haven't used a better knife than this. I haven't used a better knife than this. And I'd say I like using this even more than I like using my Skookum Bush tool. I like using this even more than I like using my Skookum Bush tool, which I, I can't believe I just said that, but I did. This thing's fantastic. The geometry is excellent. The handle is excellent. And LT, if you're watching this, modify that pit just a little bit. I think you know what I'm talking about. And it will be damn near perfect. I didn't touch hey guys. Any. Well, today I'm going to do a video that I hope will be the first in a series of videos. I've recently joined with a group of guys on uh, on YouTube here um, that have that we've kind of joined together, and we're going to start doing some reviews. Primarily, right now, it's going to be knife reviews. Chris himself has already reviewed this knife a little bit, and William Myers from Mantis Outdoors has already reviewed it. He's going for a Nesmic style here with a little bit more bushcraftiness to it, so we'll give it a whirl here. I know by looking at this knife that this is going to be a pretty good skinner, but it's not wholly devoted to skinning because if it were, the belly would be continue on a lot more up front here. He did this this point here to try to help with, you know, just doing some bushcrafting stuff. And uh, one thing I will note is that it's eighth inch 01 tool steel. A lot of people are going with really thick knives nowadays. This 01 tool steel, if you don't use it like a hammer or um, a pry bar or something like that, an eighth of an inch is going to do you just fine. That's like this, it's got a nice beefy handle, not one of them little skinny tiny handles you got. Now I messaged Chris, uh, like I said, it's gone through two reviews already. I messaged Chris and said, hey, did you sharpen this knife at all? Nope, didn't sharpen it. All right, well, that's cool, I can sharpen it when I, when I get it. Is it cool if I sharpen it? Yeah, sure, if it needs to be sharpened, sharpen it. Well, this is basically the first time, or right now is gonna be the first time I've used it, but I did shave a little bit with it. This thing does not need to be shaved, or I mean does not need to be sharpened, sorry. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but... I mean, you hear that? I mean, it's just delicate pressure, man. Just delicate pressure. That's, that's the quality you're going to get when you get an LT right knife. Now, I just did a little bit of beaver chew around it. Doing this is hard on your edge of your knife. This isn't like batoning. This is totally, or uh, yeah, splitting your wood down the middle, you know, like batoning how normal people do baton because this is edge contacting the wood the whole time when you baton it's only the first little bit that contacts the edge because then the rest is following the split of the thicker part of the knife this is hard on the edge right now I guarantee you people are gonna have to sharpen this knife after they get done after I get done with it
it's starting to split that wood right away. See what I mean by the the edge isn't hardly contacting that wood right now. I've worked with other blades that had curves to them like this. And for me a slicing meth method seems to be better, although just going straight down seems to work pretty good too. But sometimes you put a little angle on there. Oh, that one's pretty thick. The point is, is whether the knife has performed and uh, so far it has for me. You know, I didn't think I'd like this knife this much. I, I don't want to get too crazy about gushing over it or anything, but I'm surprised that this is working so well. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. With this curved blade, what it does, in case you guys have never used this style before, this is uh, similar in concept in my opinion to like a, I'm going to butcher the name, but a Gurkha, you know like a, the, the knife from India, I've got a cold steel one. What it does is it, it when you chop or when you baton lightly like, like I was just doing, now keep in mind this is softwood, but you know you don't really need to be doing this with oak anyway, but uh, it concentrates the force of the energy of the baton into a very fine point. In other words, it's not it's it's not as abrupt as a chisel, but it's not a straight thing as, as a normal blade does. So what it does is it concentrates all that energy right to where you want it. Now that is how to skimp on materials, but still make a fire. <laughs> but whatever, you guys get the idea. All right guys, final thoughts on the knife. Right off the bat, you might look at it and say, oh, that's weird or whatever. It's not normal like our normal bushcrafting knives. I kind of thought that a little bit when I first looked at it. This thing performed like crazy. I've got zero hand fatigue whatsoever. This handle is awesome. It's finally, there's, starting to make handles that are big enough for you know you get those little thin handles and you get hot spots man I just I can't stand them this curved little blade works as a good little chopper you can direct all your force into this wrong area into this belly part of the knife nice skinning edge nice bow drill tip socket starter right back there nice little straight semi straight area this is a pretty nice knife. I was just able to do a one stick bow drill fire with it. So you guys out there that are into bushcraft and stuff like that, I think you're going to like this knife. Those of you who are into other things, you know, the other guys are out there, they're going to review it their way, but I don't know, man. I like it. It's a good knife.